All right, part seven, we're gonna look at the setup of your tables. So different tables in the ECU have different functions and depending on their function, they may require to be a different size, whether they're three dimensional tables, two dimensional tables or a one dimensional table um, or even four dimensional. Um, but the default is a completely blank 2500 um, ECU map and they've got some values in there already to start you off with but it's unlikely that most projects will need 10,000 RPM and your, your application might be boosted it might not be boosted if it's boosted there's no point having all this space up here for up to two bar of boost again if you're only going to run a bar of boost in your ECU you know you're wasting some of the usable space holding data you don't need on the flip side some tables don't need to be that precise or that much, have that much resolution, so you can actually shrink the table down and make your life easier when it comes to tuning. So let's look at like the base uh, fuel map for example here. So it's got a 500 RPM interval pretty much all the way up, and then at the very top it's got a thousand RPM intervals. It's got 10 kPa intervals in vacuum, and it's got 20 kPa intervals in uh, boost. So using the uh, table access setup here, you can actually change the sources of other tables but also the actual uh, values of each of the columns and rows. Now you see the fuel table is quite a large table, it can actually be 32 by 32 by 8, so that gives you quite a lot of um, settings you can, uh, or, sort of, or cells you can have in that table, quite a lot of detail. Um, and basically what the EC will do is it will pick the closest cells to the current sensor value, so in this case if it determines the engine load is 65 it'll pick the 70 and the 60 and let's say you're at 2250 revs 2000 and then 2500 it'll actually pick a value between the values of the four cells that are related to it and it will interpolate closer to one value or the other value now engines aren't like linear so if you had a cell at 2000 only and a cell at 4000 only only the values at 3000 aren't guaranteed to be exactly halfway in between so you need to have enough detail to be able to predict the the curvature of an engine's um, uh, how do we say the volumetric efficiency has got a curve to it, and you want to get enough detail to make it so that you are close to that curve as possible. But at the same time, you don't want to have so many cells in here. I mean, a fuel map of 32 different RPM points from say 0 to only 7,500 RPM. That means you're tuning cells in at every couple hundred RPM. So what you might want to actually do to start with is to potentially remove a whole bunch of cells and let's say for example you removed all the um, intervals here that we didn't want you can see you can just do them one at a time or you can grab several at once and let's say this engine is never going to rev past seven and a half thousand so we can get rid of these completely and then let's say for example this is only going to be up to a bar of boost because it's a, a relatively low boost engine we can get rid of all these cells and you can see how your fuel table is now shrunk down um, you might want to start putting in some sensible values. This is this is the complete default values from Haltech. You might put some sensible values in for what your engine is likely to see. Um, typically, you'd want to put in around 100% VE where you, wherever your peak torque is under load. And you're probably going to start on sort of 50, 60, 70 around the idle area, increase up towards peak torque, and then fall off top end. Same as peak torque here. You might start at 25. Percent less, 10 or 20 percent less of your peak, and then you might find that as you go past peak torque, your V drops off. So you can kind of put some sensible numbers for what you expect into here. Now, let's say you've gone on the dyno and you've decided that you know we've got some basic values in here, but when you're between cells, the linearization isn't right. You know, the, the interpolation between 3000 and 4000 comes up with a number that doesn't actually match how the engine performs. What you can then do is go back into here, for example, and once you've mapped out some basic values on the dyno, you could then come back in here and you could fill in some more cells like so in all the areas that you feel that you need more detail like so and the EC will then interpolate the current values it's got fill in the new, new cells and then you can actually come in here and fine tune these new areas that you've got there now let's say you're still struggling with linearization around here you've got the opportunity to later come back in and put even some more resolution in there. You might do 3250, you might do 3750, you might do 4250. You know, there might be certain points in the rev range where you need extra detail to get a nice smooth tune. So there's always a compromise between having too many cells to manage with, too many cells to tune, versus not having enough detail. 
So the fuel map, for example, could be 32 by 32, which means you can put literally probably, and we're only on 19 cells now, so you could probably do 200, 200 to 250 RPM resolution across the entire rev range of this engine. Um, same as the load, you might find at certain load points you might have put like a minus 55, minus 45 in there because you might find there's some not, you know, it's really hard to get it dialed in at that point. But at boosted areas, you might even do it every sort of 0.4 bar because, you know, the, the volumetric efficiency of the engine doesn't change very much in this area. So you've got quite a lot of space to play with on the base fuel table, the, you know, base ignition table, similar sort of thing. You've got the target lambda table again. This sort of stuff set up from Haltech by default, but you might need to play with these values. You know, set these values up before you start tuning as well. Um, if this is only an NA engine, for example. You don't need any of these cells here. You might decide that this is too rich for you. So you set your targets up, set the ranges up that you need. Looking at other tables like the trim table, for example. You've got an air temp correction here. You've got air temp correction under fuel. Now this is one thing to be aware of this table here should probably be zeroed out if you've gone into here and set the fuel system to use auto VE air temp compensation which means it uses the temperature as part of the VE calculation then you can only use this to dial in the last little bit if you need to make a correction to the ECU um, but again this table here can be expanded up to a 16 by 16 and it can only be done on a, a 3D table not a 2D table so you need to be aware that certain tables have limitations. So post, car, post start correction here, what we got here, up to 16 by 16. Um, another one to think about, here you go, injection stage one, injector dead times. This is only a 2D table. So you might actually want to enable injector to pressure differential. And you might want to say, fill in a whole bunch of uh, numbers here because injected dead times aren't necessarily just affected by voltage they're also affected by fuel pressure changes so let's say this system is a fixed fuel pressure and the fuel pressure will go down as you go on to boost and up as you go into, into vacuum you may actually want to put in some different dead times here um, the RPM limiter here for example based on temperature you might decide that you don't want that you just want a single value so you can come in here you can literally pick out all the different values, delete them. Doesn't matter what you put that is because it was. Ooh, that's at least two in there. Enable access. Turn the access off, rather I should say. Hey, there we go. Want a single value, seven and a half thousand all the time. You don't really care. But at the same time, you then might decide I want to do it by temperature, but also engine running time. So you might want to add, you know, multiple options for this table. So be aware that the tables are not fixed, and you can play with them. You know, you might want to look at everything from target lambda to your base fuel map. You know, you've got your fuel density here. This could be changed based on whether you're on different types of fuel. Um, we could have a switch or a gauge or something to change your fuel density, for example. Um, your prime pulse this is currently based on engine temperature only. Same with like cranking. Coolant temp corrections, air temp corrections and so on. Post start enrichment. You know, some of these tables here you might just leave alone until you first start the car and then dial them back or, or up once you know what's going on. Um, the zero demand table again. I, I remember doing a car where I took the zero demand ignition table. We had no idle control but what I actually did was I added a second input here based on whether the air conditioning was turned on and that would then allow for more... Um, was it the air conditioning? Actually it might have been the cooling fan. Allowed for more timing when the cooling fan kicked in. So the tables are flexible and you can be quite creative with what you do with them. Same as when you start doing the generic inputs and the outputs. So under the function section here um, you can add a generic sensor, generic output for example, generic channel. Um, you can name it test and it outputs from a table. You can assign it a pin for example, uh, as a stepper pin. Once you've got your generic test here, you can have a thing that switches on, for example, maybe it's a water meth controller when manifold pressure and RPM is over a certain point. Um, let's say 0, 100, we might want to say engine RPM is over 2000, or 5000, or whatever you want to put in here, for example. You've got a little table. Um, you can set your value 
to either a what do I set it as a duty cycle, or you can do it as a state, literally on or off. So you've got the option here to put on, but you can only pick one or on or off. You can't put two in there, for example. So this is a table that would switch a solenoid on or off depending on what's going on with manifold pressure or RPM. But you could literally pick any any of the ECU's uh, values. And you can do some quite clever things with them. And you can also chain them together. Um, you can also have extra options on the generic output here as well. You know, you can set minimum state time on and off. You can set things that will be conditional based on the uh, uh, output. You've got stepper positions, frequency, table mode, condition based. There's, there's all sorts of things you can play with here. Um, but my key point I'm trying to make to you really is go through your tables, set up the axis of the tables to be relevant to your engine and the load to be relevant to the load range you're working in. Get some default values that are approximate in there and get yourself set up before you start your engine. Alright, thanks for watching.